So when an answer then, you know, like what you want to consider is like the amount of first aiders. So you have to say, you know, like, is that realistic then? So you have to put in those words. You have to say like the amount of first aiders should be realistic to the population then. And that's what they mean by refer to the case study, right? So it's realistic, but it's realistic according to the size of the organization, right? Um, there is a guidance on this that say you must have, I think, at least one first aider for every 50 employees. So then this is what they mean in terms of realistic, right? So you relate the trading of maybe, let's say, this is what I would say, like the trading of two first aiders should be considered based on the size of the organization. And we'll go back to the case study because I can't remember how much persons it was. And then proportion, it could also mean in terms of the risk. Right? Of course, um, you know, I would probably think of risk as a second answer. I'll say, like, what should be considered? So the first aid needs are realistic. I'll have to consider the risk. So, like, if the risk is high, then I will consider, you know, like, probably two first aiders. If you have a night shift, maybe another first aider. Because the risk is high, and because the risk is high, we want to ensure that the amount of first aiders is proportionate to the risk involved. And this, this is what you all missed, right, on the question. So this is why I, I used to say, you know, make sure and read with a pencil in your hand. And um, you have to stop and pause and think and often just relate back to the scenario at all times, right? So this one, the catch in this one was realistic and proportionate. Let me go back to the, I have to clean that there. We're going to just go back and Kind of spot read a bit to see because, uh, you know, um, you could often read that on your own, right? Uh, let me just go back up because we're all about technique. We're all about. Yeah. So you are a full time worker at a busy retail store, 9 a.m. to 1800 hours Mondays to Saturdays and 10, you know, to, so this is what you had to mention. So if it didn't read, that's what it mean referred to the study in this one, right? So it was saying things like that like because the stores open on a Saturday and a Sunday. So then the number of first aiders will have to cover those days. Like you may have to have a first aider for Monday to Friday or Monday to Saturday, you know, and then, um, you know, on the Sundays, you may have to have like another first aider. So this is what they meant by, you know, making it realistic and proportionate then, right? So it is located in workers, two part-time workers covering weekends and a store manager who joined the team three months ago. So that's four, five, they have been, uh, you have been employed at the store for the last 10 years. Temporary workers are usually employed by the store during busy seasonal sale period and, sorry, on a short-term contract. We needed more of a tie-in to that scenario. I think what, what a lot of you all did is pull out lines, but in a way, um, you have to kind of answer the question. Now, why I'd mention the books, because this is actually in the book. The factors to consider are in the book for first aid, chapter three, right? So if you get it, I don't know if I could find the exact page for you now or the time that will take, but it goes kind of scroll through chapter three till you find first aid. And that was actually in the book, the factors to consider for first aid. But what you needed to do now was not just, you know, I mean, this was a kind of double question in that you didn't just need to, I'm trying to see if I see it and I'm not seeing it, right? But it did need to just give the answer then, but it had to be brought back into realistic and proportionate, right? Uh, page 67, the factors to consider for first aid, right? So they had all the answers there, but then you have to kind of relate it to, is it realistic to the company? Is it proportionate, right? And so that is what needed to be done for a question like this. Now, again, they don't really repeat questions, but especially in the same year, but it can never be, um, but I'm trying to see if they mentioned the part with the first aid, right? Okay, look at here. So you go to help the worker picking up one of the worker, worker down the stairs. Although untrained, both you and the current store manager treat the injured worker as best as you can. And again, that talks about like what Joanna point was, was training, but you have to know to tie it in, right? Although untrained, right? You help them, and the manager goes to get a glass of water for the shaken worker who is in pain from the injuries. While you go to look for a first aid box, you cannot find a first aid box. A risk assessment dated two years ago on the store manager's desk. You ask the worker what happened and you record this in the accident book. You think that the accident was due to the worker carrying too many boxes. Anyway, back to the first, it's another thing you want to provide here. Like the, the first aid things, if you go back to the question, another first aid thing, I guess you want, right? What should be considered? So the first aid needs are realistic. So you need, I mean, you basically need a first aid kit, right? Um, or first aid provisions then, right? And uh, you relate that uh, again, the number of workers 
the type of accidents. You see, okay, it's realistic based on the fact that, you know, um, it's sort of like a, uh, like a place where accidents can happen. You relate it, you know, you say it's proportionate. It's not too, it's not too unreasonable to ask for a first aid kit, right? So that is what had to be done for this number one here. So it's a bit tricky in terms of uh, everything have to come back to real estate. What should be considered? So the first aid needs a realistic try. Um, I didn't check the number of responses you all have, but I guess if it's okay, I have, um, is it okay that I use some of your papers a bit? Yes. Okay. So I have some here. Like I said, I mean, we are all here to learn, uh, you know, showing you somebody that passed, um, may not show you like what they did wrong then, right? So um, the marks, of course, that you all got range from, it ranged up to 40. The highest mark here was 40. Not too sure if the student is here, right? Um, that's check and true, right? But highest mark was 40. Again, like I said, when I was in the UK, um, you'd be surprised. I, I mean, I was surprised they would look at this and they would just see five marks again. You know, they don't look at it as how we look at it. And that, that's something that caught my attention. Of course, coming back to Trinidad here is a different story. But again, proof of that is what I said is that they don't use what we think of it as, you know, some of you all, you know, hopefully you don't see yourself as that because, you know, I think we all go through from even my experience, I told you, I had failed a safety course. I wouldn't say which one. I wouldn't say which one as yet. And many people who you know in safety today that I'll eventually call your names anyway, uh, I, I have some of them. There's one of them, his rap sheet is long. When I mean his rap sheet, he would write exam and write exam and write exam. And his thing was, he says, Shadrach, I just have to get it. And today, years ago, he got it. Uh, years ago, he got it, right? Um, he's actually on my Facebook page. He's on the school Facebook page with a trophy in his hand. And nobody knows that except me and him and you all know, right? But rap sheet was long. You know, some people like that, you have to get it. And, you know, that's the thing, though, I always admire Nibo students because, um, you know, it does call for some stamina, financial, you know, uh, what we go through then, you know, I had a student at the office today, a certificate student, right? I don't know how I end up talking about this. Anyway, just what happened today, a third student, he's in the degree class now, you know, and um, he was saying he was talking to somebody from UE, or somebody with a UE master's, and they don't know what they're talking about. He said they don't know what they're saying. And I tell them, yeah, because, you know, the UE program isn't as compact. And you will teach you other things other than safety then for the MSc then. They teach you, like, what you learn in the safety certificate, you, you know, more than somebody in the MSc. For real, because I used to teach it, right? They teach you chemistry and psychology and sociology and stuff. So you had a kind of hanging there, right? Because you are not the only one. I know of lecturers today. One of my lecturers, he taught for me on this Saturday there didn't get it the first time. This is just how it is, but we understand the words of it and we press on, we press on to get it, right? Anyway, that student is telling me, you know, he, well, he have the Nibo cert, right? He told me, um, he said, Shadrach has something to talk to you. Say, he said, you'll be proud of me. I said, what? So what happened? He said, he did a consultancy for a company, right? And uh, he charged him $15,000. And I said, well, Mikel, Mikel is his, I said, I said Mikel, that's more than enough money to pay back for the whole course. He said, yeah. He said he, he did a consultancy for a company. He didn't do much. He just wrote a safe system of work for them and he trained them. He charged them $15,000, right? So there is, a, even for me, like I said, even for me, I, I again, I don't tell my regular students. So I don't want to tell nobody what I'm telling you all, right? Even I faltered, but no one sees that. And we all falter, right? I mean, all of us would have written various exams and the idea is not to stay down because I didn't stay down. And all these people are telling you didn't stay down either. And today, they are top men in, um, you know, I don't want to call the company, Atlantic, Hummingbird, top men all over the place. Nobody knows that except me and me, the teacher. But I normally share it with the, with the folks who are going through this so that you know that, um, you know, sometimes they look and they say, why God, why? Right? Why you put me through this? Well, sometimes it's maybe to help somebody out in the future. Like for me, when I had failed. Accidents of why, why this and why that. But maybe it's because of this, is to tell you that life is like that. Life isn't always about ups. It's also about, it's all about a journey, right? And uh, sometimes you learn more in times like these then, right? And I, again, I went through many times of that. I went to CXF, I passed three subjects the first time, 
right? And then they come back and get ones though, right? But, you know, I mean, it was a whole year you had to repeat. So these are the things that happen. And uh, like I said, the idea here, even they'll start sharing more names with you so that you know some of these people out there. All right, so with that said, I mean, it's kind of bridge into Joanna's thing a bit. And I get thanks for I said, um, you know, we'll be sharing papers as we go. It's not just her alone. And, you know, it's just amongst ourselves. Um, uh, sorry, I don't have mine. I mean, because my, my daily exam wasn't like this. If I share mine, it's a different format anyway. Then God only knows where that is. That question, um, he, we see here, first aid then, again, what the question was asked was like, what you'll consider for the first aid needs to make it realistic and proportionate. So uh, formatting, this is what I said, everybody have this down. I can put everybody paper here with some correct answers here, but not all of them and everybody paper is like that. Like I said, this study school is a bit strange because normally I could just fix it then by telling you write more. Or I could just fix it by telling you, write more lines, write more numbers. But with this class, it's different. This class, the, the whole thing here is, um, is all about reasoning, which is harder to work on, right? So let's see. And I'll kind of read anyone that didn't plot these would be incorrect, right? So I'm just going to go to number seven. The store manager can have the person carrying out induction to new workers to inform them of the first aid arrangement. So this will not be correct. But this is one that is not correct. The reason is that the access for the first aid provided. If you have your books, like I said, you kind of trying to get it from page 67 of chapter three. So the things to consider is like, um, yeah, all the answers are there in your book, right? I'm just trying to not look at it, but maybe we look at the hazard present in the workplace, right? So maybe Joanna put that somewhere, but again, I've chosen number seven, right? So the hazard of the workplace, I think it was people having to the store attendant having to work at height a bit. They had to pack their shoes, retrieve the shelves. So then that's what you want to consider. You want to consider like the nature of hazard then. And if the nature of hazard was a bit of work at height, then um, I guess the first aid, the thing to consider would have been that, you know, like uh, work at height. So that's the answer they're looking for. You have to say, what you want to consider is maybe the number of workers in the workplace. You want to consider the hazard, I'm reading this from the book, right? The hazard present in the workplace being, you know, maybe, you know, fall from heights, um, resulting in things like strain injuries, sprain injuries. And then the first aid container then must have had things to deal with that. Like a bandage, not a bandage, sorry, um, using the wrong thing. Well, a proper bandage, like a triangular bandage, right? Uh, I think that's the proper name of it, right? Like the triangular bandages, right? So those are the things that, and you say, well, that's realistic because, and so you have to keep using the word that's realistic because the, the store attendants are going to hide, they are retrieving shoes and, you know, whatever have you, and it's a, probably a very rapid job anyway. So it's realistic that we kind of cater for those types of injuries. Think of getting it. I'll just do one more again. Because I want isn't information officially written down pertaining to first aid. Uh, the store manager can have the information written down. Again, this is not correct, right? Because they ask for what, what you need to consider the first aid provisions that needs to be considered. Let's go back and kind of look at it a bit. I'll share it back with you, right? So this is one of the ways that you could run off track. What did I do with that paper now? Uh, not seeing it in the view screen. Let me... Oh, I think it's up here, right? Um, yeah, so one of the ways to, to, to really run up, and this is something that, like I said, we have three weeks to rest this problem in then, right? You have to print your paper, right? This is not it. This is just a file page, right? You have to print your paper and have it in your hand, and every answer you put down, you have to watch back and see if you answer any question. Because with some of you here, I'm not going to do another person as yet. I'll go to another question. Some of you have some correct answers, but then some of it wrong as well, right? So with everyone, this is, this is the class weakness that you have to, first of all, well, I think I helped you with today one, and that is what is wrong too. I should not have helped you with the answer. I told you the answers was on page 67. There's one thing to figure out what the question is asking, what should be considered so that first aid needs are realistic and proportionate. Now, if you have page 67, I was saying, um, it said there, factors to consider when deciding first aid provisions and the number of first aiders. That's almost the answer there. So what you want to consider then, like what should have been there? Like if you just take one from the book, we could talk about, look how very nice and the, the work patterns from the book. What you want to consider is the work pattern. They had mentioned from the one paragraph I read, and this is when you refer to the scenario. Right. This is when you refer back to the scenario, the work patterns, they say it's Monday to Saturday, and that's what they were looking for. So work we'll just to consider, right? And I'll put the answer then. And that was that paragraph. <sighs> went too fast and I went too slow with it. Right? But the story is open, and this is what they mean by refer to the scenario. 9 a.m. to 1800 hours Monday to Saturday. And that's what you're talking about. So the work pattern 
you know, uh, you'd have to consider that in terms of um, the, let's see what again you have, the work pattern and the systems of work or, or shift systems of work. And that's what they had, they had shift systems of work. So what you simply had to say was that, you know, they would need to consider having a first aid facilities from Monday to Saturday, 1600 hours. And, and that's what they were looking for. That was the answer, right? But the mistake here though was to just write about first aid. And again, remember you have to say that that's realistic it's realistic that you know you have a suitably stocked first aid container or kit or room Monday to Saturday, but then the room is also open on a Sunday. You have to say that because there are workers who are working on a Sunday from testing then. So, so it's realistic to have one or two first aid, should I say points or containers or facility rooms or whatever have you. Yes, Nairon? So I might understand. So you just can't simply state that you have a stock first aid kit on hand. You must put the time time in the business spaces open yes because remember you have to give what needs to be considered to make the first aid provision realistic and proportionate so what to make it realistic and proportionate one of the answers i'm reading from the textbook is the work pattern to be able to you should say that what needs to be considered is the shift system or the work pattern and then this by referring by referring to the scenario you should say, then you're related, when you're related back to Monday to Saturday and then Sunday, and, it, and you say, okay, yeah, but you need to have a suitable room and a su suitable number of containers on Monday to Saturday, and then maybe lesser on a Sunday because, you know, it's, right? So the element of reasoning is the hardest element to get out to, because it's something that is developed over years, you see, it is developed like from CX, it is come all the way up, right? But um, like I said, some, some crunch ways then to get into reasoning is make sure an answer the question that is said and not just put the answers then you know as without relating it back here to the question that it should be considered ah and then all of these in your book here should have been taken and then it should be related back to the scenario using the information from the scenario any questions again if you have the book look at page 327 367 but like I said, uh, in doing that, that may have given you a jump today because on the day of the exam, you don't have the help then. You don't have the person to help you get the answer, right? So all of that is reasoning and understanding that we need to work on. Any questions on that again? So that is what I would have, uh, I mean, we just use one paper um, just to give you a demonstration, but sort of, there, there were some of you had it correct, but again, not all 15 was correct. And again, I remember that's how they check everything you say if you got 37 mark or 35 mark, it meant you did well because at least in the British mind, because they got 35 things correct on the paper, but you had to get 45 things correct to be awarded the, the pass grade anyway. Question? Okay, well, we'll try another one. We'll just look at another one. Again, I don't want to give it the paper. If you have the paper, I wanted to try number one, right? If you don't have it, I would try to send it for you tomorrow, but everybody would have this because it would have been emailed to you. Try over number one if it is along what they want then, right? And hopefully you understand how to do it because you have to refer to proportionate. You have to say like having two first aiders, you know, is proportionate to the number of workers or even to the risk involved, right? And then you put the information from the scenario, right? So um, this, again, there was somebody who did really well in. I think this is one that people did well in, uh, but again, it sort of kind of ran off eventually, right? So based on the scenario only, what management failures could have contributed to this accident? So the reading is very important. Uh, some tricks of this one was that um, the management failures had to come from, from the scenario. So like there were some failures that people spoke about that was not from the scenario. Based on the scenario only, what management failures could have contributed to the accident? But ma the majority of you all got this correct, right? But we'll go back and check this scenario just now and we'll see what, you know, like, um, in other words, then you, you couldn't say something that if it wasn't in this scenario, right? So you have to give the management failures from the scenario. Uh, I'm just going to dissect B and C a bit. So the store manager decided to hold an emergency meeting with all workers. Now, eventually, I want you to tell me, you know, like what the question is asking, right? Um, so based on the scenario only, what immediate actions could be discussed in this meeting? So the manager decides to hold an emergency meeting with all workers, right? So what immediate actions could be discussed in, in this meeting to help prevent a repeat of the accident, right? So um, these things you need to bear in mind, and one of the catches was actually immediate action. 
what immediate action could be discussed? And he needed six of them, right? The other one, uh, what long-term administrative countermeasures could the employer carry out to help avoid the repeat of this? So the other thing was long-term, and then many people wrote things that wasn't long-term. And then it is administrative control. So what long-term administrative control measures could be employed uh, to help you know, avoid a repeat of the accident? So when you write your answers, this is what I'm saying. This is how you, know, you have to kind of, like if you say, okay, like before I go back to it, right? Like before I go to the case, case study. So it's an emergency meeting where the workers, the person fell. So what could be done, right? So an immediate action could be like, I guess, um, you know, like uh, maybe, I, I mean, I didn't read the whole case study, but I'm just making this up. I'm just using my brains here a bit, right? So like if it was a shelf, maybe they have to use like a proper um, step ladder, right? Uh, and so I don't know if that was used. Um, Perhaps, um, you know, like, um, and like immediate means within a week, right? Like one day to one week. So then those are the, and then you have to kind of say that this is an immediate action. You kind of have to kind of pinpoint that. You, or, or you kind of have to say like immediately, you know, like, um, like the sales attendant could be advised, you know, to take the shoes then from the lower levels, if that's even possible, right? Uh, you know, or, the packers or whatever could probably, you know, repack the shoes at a height at a lower level, right? And this could be done like within one day, the same day then, which is why it's an immediate action, right? So that's how this have to go. And then the long-term, you know, I mean, it, it, the thing is too, it's administrative. So long-term could be things here, you know, like um, uh, training falls under that. But again, you know, we want to talk about um, other administrative controls but a lot of it is in the case study. So as you read the case study, you like see what they could have done differently, right? Like follow instructions, um, you know, like devise a proper, like a proper job um, work method then to, to get those shoes and to follow it then. But that may take, you know, like more than a week. And then you say, well, that's a long-term action. So, so some of you all have this. And again, this was a bit, I think, I think this is a bit of a, a challenging question because none of these are in the book. This is all kind of like based on a real life situation. Then a lot of the answers are really in the scenario. But where the overall thing where people could have gone wrong is uh, not putting immediate actions and then not putting long term administrative controls. But in your answers, again, some of you all did that. And again, in some of your controls, they kind of started it off that way. And then in some cases, you ran off track anyway by putting other countries that wasn't administrative. Yes, sir, Stephen? Yes, sir, afternoon. Yeah. Um, what I want to find out, in terms of the administrative controls, but well, it's safe to say that we could have, um, well, I had put the, in terms of a valid, um, sorry, a suitable and sufficient risk assessment. In terms of the long term, um, yeah, I think that could work. I, guess, yeah, I mean, I have to see how you phrase it. I don't have your paper here, though. I have to see how you phrase it. But, um, you know, that is an answer. I think, you know, like doing a uh, reviewing the risk assessment. I think they said it had one day, two years old. That is an administrative control. And again, to review it may have been, you know, like within a month or so, then to implement the controls of it, right? So that's an answer. And I think you would have gotten a mark for that on the scheme. And that's what I said, like, when you look back, and this is the um, this is the challenging thing with this exam, and like when you're reviewing, then yeah, they, like when you finish, whatever time you finish, hopefully you'll finish around five o'clock, six six o'clock, and even when you finish, that's what you have to do. Like what I do in here, you can have to scrape the questions and then and see, you know, like did I answer the question, right? You know, like did I really put how I underline this with immediate? Did I really put long term immediate? Like what will make it long-term? Did I say this is more than a month? Did I say this is a month? And then that's when the examiner will give the mark, right? Because if it didn't specify long-term, you wouldn't get it either. All right, so uh, looking at the time, we have limited time, right? So I'm not gonna read the, um, the question for, sorry, the case study. I'm just gonna share another student paper with you, right? And I will just kind of jot down and see his own a bit, uh, number, number two, right? So like I said, everybody, uh, it's a small group of us here. You know, we would kind of try to share amongst ourselves what happened, right? Where Max could have been derived, right? Failure could have contributed to this accident uh, is as follows, right? 
the past manager left the company six months ago, and I think this is therefore he was not properly introduced to the company with the correct induction and rules. So this is that, like I said, he would have gotten the mark right, right? Um, use of appropriate footwear. Now, that one may be phrased wrong, right? Because they ask, um, I'm forgetting, I wrote, I wrote it down, right? The question here is, um, so this kind of started off wrong because when they say should have, that's a control. So this is all about, you know, like, like I guess, formatting. The answer is correct, right? Management should have enforced, but the way it's written is written as a control, but the actually managers did not enforce. You understand that, folks? So I'm forgetting that the actually management failures, when they say should have, right? Um, you know, they should have been where no, they didn't ask for what should have is the control. So it's all about formatting. And this is what I say, the, the, the only way to help us is to help us help ourselves, right? By looking at what we did here on the paper, right? So again, this is why they print any paper is important. Let me just flash it before you. I agree with it on the page you saw me in my hand here with. Let, let me just try to share back the question with you, um, paper, right? Uh, right? What management failures could have? You see, should have and could have is something else. Should have is a control, but could have is a failure. So there's one word would have probably cost uh, this some marks here, 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 right? Well, not could have, I guess it would have because speaking of should have and could have and would have, it, it would have cost some marks, right? So could have is different to should have. Should have suggested as a control, but it didn't ask for the controls. So it's all about formatting, right? What we did wrong, you know, wasn't that the all in right enough? That's how I started today. Wasn't that the all in right enough? It was all about formatting, all about reasoning, all about paying close attention to what was being asked, what management failures could have contributed to the accident. So you have to stop and think, what are they asking me? Are they asking me for the controls? No, right? They say could have, the accent for the failures, what, what managers did wrong then, not what they should have done. What management failures caused then the accident, right? And that, you see the difference there with that and how things are phrased. That is what caused the marks to be where the marks are at anyway, right? So managers should have, management should have enforced the use of no, they didn't ask for that. They should have no, they didn't ask for that. So that'd be no marks right there. But the point is still correct, you know, but it had to be, re, it had to be rephrased, right? That, that managers did not enforce the use of footwear, right? To be used on the job. What the worker was using currently is not appropriate as heels to go up the stairs. And that would have given him a Right? Uh, the latter piece wasn't needed. They should have been wearing comfortable flat shoes. Okay, but this was not needed because they didn't ask for the controls. They just asked for what was the cause, what could have. See, folks, how to help you all? It's not about wasting your time, right? It's about just trying to arrest what's going on here quickly so that we could kind of fix it. And then you know, all of this is back to you in three weeks' time, but four weeks' time, counting this week, right? But you had to be able to do it now and do it right in. Three lines, two and a half lines, three lines, three lines, and a little bit perfect writing, perfect number of points. I told you that's not your problem. That's nobody's problem here, except for the those two that I didn't check today, right? That's not your problem. Let's go back to the question again. The other part of the aid action uh, in the emergency meeting to prevent the accident and part C, there were six, six marks each. Uh, what was the long-term administrative control, right? So again, it could have been discussed in the meeting to prevent a repeat of the incident and workers contributed to gain knowledge. Now, this is not called as a long-term as what, you know, Stephen Ucho said in terms of the risk assessment, right? So you kind of have to remember your time scale from your project. Immediate is taken to be like now, like today, then accident happened today. Like how you're preventing it from happening again for the rest of the week. Like, like today, then like, if it happened 10 o'clock today, are you preventing it happening again? So you're telling the employees, don't go back up there. We'll probably get two packers to pack, you know, a, a daily supply of the shoes. But you must have an idea how much customers come into your store, right? If it's 100 or 200, you're going to pack a daily supply at a lower level and the clerks could take it from there. And that could be done in one day time. You, you, you understand this was the immediate control. Reviewing everything, like that, 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 that is a long-term control. That is not an immediate control. So again, these are the things, content-wise and thing, um, you really had to work on your reasoning, right? And the, the best way to help you with this, and I had a class like this before many, many years ago. You know, um, many, many years ago, right? The way I tell the students to kind of help, help but they just put yourself in this situation. Like some of you all are safeties. So what is the immediate control? What, what could we do today to prevent somebody falling for the rest of the week, right? But we had to get the shoes because remember, it's a sales company. You had, I mean, you had to sell shoes to make money. So what could be done today to help out tomorrow? Pack the shoes lower down, right? Mosquito. Say, um, say, um, say again? 
Oh, so housekeeping could be something like yeah, an immediate action too. Like, now you realize I didn't read the case study today because look at the time. I wanted to show you how study school is different than normal class now, right? Um, you know, so next week. Um, and again, I want to open another paper. I don't, I don't, I want to see how y'all perform on a brand new question. Can we have June paper, right? So when you come next week, um, you could try to do number one for me, because we kind of trying to arrest what went on today. And then um Next week, if you do number one any week and send it fine, right? I mean, this week here, next week, I will do some questions some here, but I want to hit you with a June question and see what you think, you know, and, and, see, and see what you think live then and like if we could get the answers, right? Don't be afraid, I tell you. It's not, I haven't had a, a repeater's class in a long time, but it's not as if we never had any, right? In fact, uh, up to 2019 there, we would always have, and it was over a month, just to let you know, right? Um, it used to be on a Sunday, I used to be like, whole day Sunday, some repeaters classes that go to two o'clock in the evening, half two, right? Um, so it's not new and, you know, um, you know, like I said, I hope that you kind of got rid of any feelings you had. Uh, the, the other thing, you know, family members tend to put it on you sometimes, you know, but, you know, you're really kind of doing this for yourself. And I, I told you, I mean, don't want to call anybody name, but I could call names that you would know them today as big managers. But if you see the rap sheet, the rap sheet is how much time they had to do over Nibosh, including um, people like Declan Polo. I think some of y'all know him anyway. I don't know if y'all know him. I mean, everybody in safety, not everybody was, you know, I never saw myself as a bright person. Those who know I grew up pretty poor anyway. And, but the thing is, I stopped in, right? I tell you if I fail CXC, right? I get three subjects the first time. That should tell you something, but I stopped it all the way. Today, I have three degrees and the number one course provider for Nibosh, but it's all about not giving up. Eventually, I will give up. I'll give up Nibosh because, again, frustrating event. Next, I have a kind of 10, 10 years span with myself. I kind of give myself that number of years. But the thing is, like, you know, I, I didn't give up, and so many people didn't give up. And the only person to kind of judge you the hardest is yourself. But the other thing is that I tell you, from being in England, the British don't see these marks as how you all see it. When they look at that, they say, just five marks again, and you would have passed. That's what they say. They say the student, you know, just in a little bit help again and you would have passed. That's what they do say fail. If you ever wonder why you don't get fail, you got refer. Refer means so they today for the next thing. Anyway, running out of time in one minute time, right? Uh, part B, I think it's for part B. I'll open somebody. Administrative. So a safe system of years and, and working in the storm safely using ladders. Yes. I think though this needed to have like a time frame, like maybe the next month, a long term action, right? Employment of additional workers, full time or training to help to keep all items in the stockroom readily available and stacked. Um, Employment of additional workers full time with training. I think this could work, right? Um, I know you would have gotten some marks for this, too, right? Delegation of persons to perform sighting. However, weekly is not counted as long term. Weekly is still, I mean, unless it's say ongoing weekly, but um, weekly is confusing to the British person. The weekly is seen to be something immediate, right? So you can probably say, like, in a month's time, this would have been done, and that is how it would have been long term, right? But Shazam, this is his paper. He has some good answer. Yes, safety incentives. Um, I think that could be correct. It may just differ a bit in terms of what would have needed long term. And again, um, the examiner may have taken out some marks for that there because some things may not have been done. It's not really an administrative control, right? So this would inspection is an uh, been wrong. So that's when you have to check over. That is what you're doing when you finish the paper. What I taught you to do today, you know, like underline the keywords. I'm just throwing some pencils on the ground. Yeah, underline the keywords and then make sure that you answer the question that is set. Remember what we say, the British don't lower their standard. You have to come up to their standard. I had to come up to it. The first time I could end with this story. Do you know the first time I applied to be a provider, they blanked me? Yeah, they blanked me the first time I applied to be a Nibosh provider. I marked a project. You had to mark projects. Back in the day, we, we, we were the markers of the project, right? And I honestly felt the student deserved 92. And then they said, no, that is outside of their marking. And, uh, you know, I mean, just the long and short is that, again, I didn't give up. Even for those of us, even for me, like when I applied to run the diploma, for the first two years, they blanked us, right? But I didn't give up. I kept at it, right? And today, you know, we have what we have. And that would be you too. And all these other safety people talk about, when you get it, nobody really sees how much times you had to do it. Once you get it, you get it for life anyway, right? So be encouraged. Um, question. So yeah. to, um, interject, sir. Um, just to add to the question here. Um, so what you're saying is that the time scale should have been included. Yeah, um, I think it needed to be clear as to what, what made it long-term. 
you know, because uh, if that was not, because it, see, that's what they asked for. They actually, if we go back and take a look at the question, they asked for, but also, Stephen, I think as you talking, right? Like some of them, they have to be administrative. So I can see reviewing meetings as administrative. Safety incentive could be administrative, right? Uh, so these are administrative. The last one wasn't administrative though, but again, what made it long-term, like what would have made it long-term, I guess, to be clear in the examiner mind would have been, like um, a tight action of control measures is the focus of it, right? So, you know, could, could it, that's also another key. Like sometimes like you may say, it's for the work of italics. Sometimes, you know, I mean, not something, that is what the question is often focusing on. That is what you have to kind of relate back to, right? So what you all think, uh, that's a wrap there for the hour. It went very fast. We, we call it on a Thursday. We have one on a Thursday called an hour of power without prayer, of course, but it's a powerful hour in the hour that we have it. And last night I had one too, but for the diploma students, but it's not a um, revision. Eh? They are doing the diploma students, students doing their dissertation, but it's still an hour of power, we call it, without the prayer because <laughs> it is very important. But so what you'll do for me, you can try number one if you have the paper. If you don't have it, it's mess number one. And I want to see if you're relating to Number one, there are two things to relate to at the pad, which was actually on page 67. And then you have to relate to it. Is, is it proportionate to the risk? Is it realistic to the risk? That is what you have to do. So answering the set question is the problem for us here anyway. Not the writing, not the number of points, but answering the set question. Yes, sir. One, one last question. Um, is it yeah. possible that you, would you be sending the, uh, the new question that you spoke about or would that be done at another time? 